All right, this screencast is going to describe reality assumptions and how reality assumptions are used in argument. So first and foremost, um, in chapters two and three of our textbook, when we begin we began discussing value assumptions and now we are discussing reality assumptions, you are using deductive reasoning in your reasoning to understand argument and to determine these assumptions. So I just want to bring that to your attention that in these chapters it is based on deductive reasoning. So let's talk for a minute about assumptions in general. And I want you to think about how often we assume. Um, we don't regularly analyze our thinking on a daily basis. We as humans navigate the world the way we navigate it. We don't always stop and think, what are we doing? What are we thinking? Why are we doing the things that we are doing? It's just how we have been prepared for living in this world. But whether we realize it or not, part of our preparation for living in this world is to make assumptions. Um, assumptions are so ingrained that we assume before we even realize we are doing this and I want to be very clear that when we do discuss assumptions, you know, sometimes assuming can be negative, but for the most part, it is not negative. It's actually how we navigate this world, how we um, are able to get through our days in an orderly fashion. So, for example, when we think about positive assumptions, the kind of assumptions that we make daily that keep us safe, uh, we think about how our world works. So, for example, if you want to go into a drive through you get into the drive through area. If there are cars in front of you, you wait your turn until it's your turn to pull to the front. We assume everyone is going to behave in the same way. It keeps us safe. Um, we can assume that everybody is going to stop at stop signs. This is why sometimes we even begin going at a four-way stop because we assume the person is going to wait and we're going to do this four-way stop correctly. Um, we assume that if people want to purchase something at a store that they're going to get into line and they're going to wait patiently in line, not just push to the front. You know, these assumptions are predictions. It helps us to navigate the world. It helps us to stay orderly. And it can also help with decision making. Now, negative assumptions, these are the ones that people often think in terms of any assumption that is based on prejudice or based on stereotyping. This is not advocated whatsoever in critical thinking. So when we talk about assumptions, we are not talking about negative assumptions. Um, negative assumptions are not part of critical thinking. However, if you have a negative assumption and it's brought to your mental attention and you say, gosh, wait a minute, I'm making a negative assumption, I need to rethink this. That's a positive step in critical thinking. So for example, if you're on the freeway and somebody in front of you is going super slow, it's irritating you, you notice that their license plate is from Minnesota, you may initially have a negative assumption of, oh, snowbird. That's a negative assumption. That's something as a critical thinker, you would pull back and say, wait a minute, I'm stereotyping, that isn't nice, that's not correct, that's not how critical thinking works, and you pull it back. That's a way of making a negative assumption much more positive. And those are things that we do need to work on as critical thinkers. But for our class, as we're looking for assumptions in argument, whether it's a written argument or an argument you may be having with another person, you want to be able to determine what the assumptions are behind their argument. What are they thinking? What are they basing their argument on with the way that society should be or with the way that society is? And that is what brings us to value versus reality assumptions. So with value assumptions, which we worked on in Chapter 2, you want to continue to think that a value assumption is based on how the world should be. 
So according to the person, they are saying, how should the world be? How do I think this world should be? It's based on their value systems, based on their ethical systems. Now, reality assumptions are different. Reality assumptions are based on reality. It's how the world really is. And I use the phrase, in our society, we, and then I think in those terms to help me find the reality assumptions. I actually find it easier to find the reality assumption first, and then I can find the value assumption. Because the reality assumptions are how the world is. It's a little bit more concrete because I'm not guessing what another person's value system is. I'm thinking about how our society works a good 90% of the time. So reality assumptions are, again, they're implied, just like value assumptions. They're not on the literal level. They are fully analytic. They are never written directly in the text. You have to pull them from the text. But they are beliefs about what is true and factual about the world. They're also called factual or descriptive assumptions. And they're based on our experiences, how we live in our society. So here's an example. So if I were teaching this class in person and I just said everything I just said, and then I look at my class and say, does anybody have any questions? Well, if no one raises their hand, if no one flags me down to ask a question, what reality can I assume? And of course, if you were to look at the red, it is a reality in our society that when a teacher asks students if they have questions, it's to ensure that they understand the material. If no one asks a question, then the, a teacher can assume that everyone must fully understand the material and then move on to the next subject. Now this may or may not be the case. Maybe everyone was completely confused and nobody had the courage to ask. That sometimes happens as well. But in our society, if you think about what happens 90% of the time, if no one has questions, it's because they've got it and they don't need to ask any questions. So let's do another example here just to help clarify reality assumptions. So if Karen brings merchandise to the cashier at a clothing store, she sets her merchandise down on the counter, what reality is assumed by the cashier? You can think as I get ready to click to the next slide. It is a reality in our society. If you go to a cashier with merchandise, it is assumed by the cashier that you're going to be paying for these clothes. Or you need a dressing room, maybe. But you are going to be uh, following the protocols that we have laid out in our society. And that's how you want to think about reality assumptions. How does our society work? So now in detecting reality assumptions, uh, this is described very well on page 28 of the textbook. And uh, it begins with giving you the thought that in our society, some people believe that you can be rehabilitated. And in our society, some people believe that you can never be fully rehabilitated. So this is something to kind of think about in terms of, you know, what do we believe in our society? And what do you believe about this particular issue within our society? So here's another example. If Maddie's friend tells Maddie that she is too drunk to drive home and calls her a taxi, okay, if you're first going to think about what the value assumptions are, I, like I said earlier, I like to find the reality assumptions first. But for the purpose of this slide, we're going to talk about the value assumptions. Now, value assumptions, again, they're based on the values. So if Maddie's friend says, you are too drunk to drive and calls for a taxi. Her friend sees the world as how the world should be. And her friend must believe that we should care about others. And her friend would have the assumption 
that an impaired individual should not drive a vehicle for their safety. She would also assume an impaired individual should not drive a vehicle for others' safety. So this is what her friend is saying in just this little tiny short sentence. She is implying all of this. She is assuming all of this. Now, think about the same phrase here, but now let's think about it from the perspective of reality. Okay, in reality, in our society, it is what most people believe. It's also the rules, the laws, or how we've been trained. And in our society, the level of drunkenness determines one's ability to operate a vehicle. That is a reality. If you are really drunk, you are definitely not going to be driving safely. It's another reality that if you are driving a car while impaired, you are engaging in an illegal activity, and that activity has consequences. That is another reality you can assume. And finally, another reality you can assume is that a person's future and even future career can be impacted if they have a record of a DUI. If they drive drunk and they do um, receive a ticket or a DUI, it can impact them in a negative way. So in this little sentence here, we have pulled out all of this information that is implied, that is assumed, the value assumptions and the reality assumptions. Okay, so just kind of to sum this all up, um, critical thinkers and readers realize their knowledge and their perceptions are limited. You know, they're always looking for the evidence before accepting or advocating viewpoints. And they're able to find and determine the assumptions being made in any argument, which helps them to create this evidence before accepting viewpoints. And in addition, critical thinkers need to be honest about their own personal value and reality assumptions. How do you think the world should be? And what reality do you find in this world? So you're going to end chapter three by finishing an activity that is within your textbook. It's a fairly meaty assignment, but it's going to help you understand reality assumptions greatly. This is going to help you with the test at the end of this um, module. It's a 40-point assignment. Each section here is worth 10 points. Uh, but basically, go into the textbook, and you're going to read the following sections, and then just basically summarize what you've learned from reading the section and you want to include how this learning can be applied. How can it be applied to the real world? Because all of these things are things that we use on a daily basis, not just for this class, but it improves our thinking in life in general. So you will need your textbook for this activity and this will tie up chapter three and then in the next module, we'll be moving on to a completely different section. So.